in the shape of rubbing or rubbing on a step by step guide. In previous videos, we have discussed about pointers and the rules which you follow when using pointers. Now, we will discuss some more rules in order to use pointers effectively. In relational tests, we use logging operators between operands. Relational tests on pointers are acceptable only when both operands are pointers. This is the example. These are the operands which are pointed variables. This is the relational operator. If this statement is true, then this statement logging is executed. Now consider this example. This form is not acceptable as the relational test is against a constant rather than a pointer. It must also be noted that pointer comparison must be between pointers to the same data. This is the example. You can see that these pointer operands have same data specifier. Both these variables point to the correct data type. So this test is valid. Now consider this code. This expression is not acceptable as both pointers have different data specifiers. Pointers do not have to point to a single variable. They can also point at cells of an array. When we add to a pointer such as p plus 1, we do not literally add 1 to the pointer address. Instead, we add 1 to the address to the pointer. Consider the following code. In this line, we have defined a pointer named IP with an integer specifier which means that its scalar is 2 bytes. Here, we have initialized an array of 10 elements. This is A0, this is A1, this is A2, this is A3, and this is A4, and so on. Remember, arrays are 0 based. So A0 is the first cell. In memory, arrays are stored like this. Let's suppose that the address of A0 is 2200. These are the addresses of other elements. Here, address of operator is used to fetch address of fourth element of array. After fetching the address, it is stored in variable IP. The value of variable IP now becomes 2203, which means that pointer IP is pointing at the fourth cell of the array. If we use IP with an indirection operator, then IP points to the value of A3. Once we have a pointer pointing to an array, we can start pointer arithmetic. Start by adding 1 to IP like this. It gives a pointer to the cell on further on, which is in this case is a A4 value. To make this clear, let's assign this pointer to another pointer variable like this. IP2 also points to A4. Now, if we want to change the value of A4, use this. It will replace the value of A4 with value 11, but it is not necessary to assign a new pointer value to a pointer variable in order to use it. We could also compute a pointer value and use it immediately like this. Now it will replace 11 with 5 again. Note that there is a difference between this expression and the expression we used here. This expression fetches the value pointed by IP and adding 1 to that value while this expression expresses the value 1 past the 1 pointed by the IP. Now consider the following code. This is pointer definition. This is array initialization having size of 5. Here, my variable holds the address of first element of an array. Here, pointer is incremented by 2 to get third value of our array. Here, serial monitor is configured to print third value of array which is 5. The output on serial monitor looks like this. To understand this relation, we first need to understand two-dimensional arrays. Two-dimensional array is like a two-dimensional matrix. This matrix has three rows and three columns. This array can be defined in C like this. This is the data specifier. This is the name of array. This shows the number of rows and this is the number of columns in an array. These are the rows in a column. This is row 1, this is row 2 and this is row 3. Its equivalent matrix looks like this. In order to access this value, use this command. This value is in the third row and the fourth column. Consider the following example. Here, we have defined a matrix with two rows and four columns. In memory, array elements are stored in major row order like this. Row 1 first, followed by row 2. These are the addresses of each element of the array. Following code shows how to access an element in two-dimensional array using a pointer. Here, we have defined a pointer. This is the initialization of an array which has two rows and four columns. 
This two-dimensional array looks like this in matrix form and it looks like this in memory. Here, address of operator simply fetches the address of value at second row and fourth column and stores this address in pointer variable. These lines configure the serial monitor and display the value at the address pointed by the pointer. So, output is 8. In order to understand this concept, consider the following code. This part of code configures serial link to the PC. Here, an integer variable is initialized to number 50. This statement defines a pointer to function. Note that it has a data specifier which declares this variable as pointer to a function which will return an integer value. It means that the specifier for the function pointer is dictated by function's return value. This is a static sign which indicates that a pointer is involved. This line simply states that func pointer is a pointer to a function which has a single integer argument and returns an integer data type. If the function did not have an argument, then the declaration would change like this. This statement copies the L value of function display value into the variable func pointer. This statement calls the function display value by using function pointer passing the value number to the function. When argument is passed to the function, it simply displays the current value of the variable number, which is 50. It also spares the number and sends it back to the caller as a return value for the function call. These statements simply show the return value on serial monitor, which is 2500. This is the complete output shown on the serial monitor. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Take care.